Mark Farner of Grand Funk Railroad talks about the band he thinks is the greatest of the trios. The greatest in the world. And of course, he was part of a big trio with Grand Funk Railroad. Here's Mark Farner. What's your opinion on other power trios like Mahogany Rush, James Gang, Triumph, uh, Jimi Hendrix, of course, they were a trio. Do you uh, do you have opinions on other power trios? Yeah, man. Um, it's fresh cream. I mean, you know, that first album Cream came out with, oh, my God. The tone, Clapton. Yeah, that that Gibson, through whatever amp he was playing through, it was the whip, man. And, uh, and of course, Hendrix, he was, uh, for me, he was my guitar god. I loved that he could make that guitar sing. He could make it cry. He could make it speak. It spoke to me. And... Uh, you know, and Rush, you know, Gary Lee, uh, the the voice, the 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 sound of everything that as it came together as that song came out, there was there was certain bands that had that anointing. You know, it was like an anointing. It's like you know, Elvis had an anointing on him. The Beatles had an anointing on them, and we we have. You know, because it, it captures uh, spiritually, it captures a part of us that that brings to our focal point something we didn't even realize was within us. But the music helps bring it out. You know, and, Bill Simzik, I just, you know, the Eagles fame and James Gang and all that stuff. I just interviewed him. And uh, I, just before we left, oh, I said, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Bill, he says, OK, what? I says, who did you want to produce and never produce? And you know what he said? Big country of all things from England. And then he said, but mostly Rush. I said, what? Bill Simzik produced? I was just floored, Mark. I said, what? He says, because I wanted to work with the best musicians in the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of that, I'm kind of curious. When you were growing up, were your parents plugged into what was going on? My dad, World War II veteran, tank driver in the 7th Armored Division, Returned home with four bronze medals. He was in four major battles, and he lived to to come home and work as a fireman in the city of Flint, Michigan. And I remember walking behind him, brother. Him and my Uncle Woody were out bird hunting, ringneck pheasant. And I'm back behind him because I, I would just tag along, you know, because I love to be with him. And I heard my dad say to Uncle Woody, Woody, because they're talking politics and whatever, and uh, what was in the Flint Journal, and and my dad looks at what he he says. You believe that shit? He says, "I'm gonna tell you something. If you really want to know where the trouble starts, trace that money trail to the top." That, my friend, that stuck with me. I was only eight years old back then, uh, seven, eight years old, but. Those words have stuck with me because that truth is setting me free today because I I know that's where the trouble starts. Those people have an agenda. By the way, did your parents, how did they react to uh, what was going on? I mean, you guys were the biggest band in the uh, uh, that era, the, that span of years. I mean, no one's touching you guys. So how did your parents, I mean, they knew you were, they obviously knew you could sing and you could play guitar, but, but when, and I mean, I, I read the, the quote where you guys were, were, you know, using snow to shave and to drink and uh, just before it, it broke out. But after that, we'll get to that in a second, but after that, when things, you couldn't turn a corner without hearing about you guys, how did, how did they react? Well, my dad died when I was nine years old. My father. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Nope. Frederick Farner. And my mom remarried about two years after that to Reginald Russell Fortune, a great guy from Flint, Michigan. And uh, I brought my mom and Pedge, which was his nickname because his brother couldn't say Reginald. He called him Pedge. <laughs> so... So my mom, Betty and Pedge, came to New York City uh, to 
to watch us at Madison Square Garden. We were doing three shows back to back, all sold out for uh, the Phoenix House, which uh, back then we uh, we just felt like we were compelled to help them uh, rescue a lot of the Vietnam veterans that were coming home that were hooked on heroin. A lot of them, man, they were, you know, just down and out. So with the money that we raised, uh, over half a million dollars, uh, we started seven Phoenix houses in New York City. And my mom and my stepdad, Pedge, were there. And it was my mom, after the show, she came up to me. She had tears running down her face. She said, son, you're doing so good. I am so proud of you. And what you guys are doing for the veterans, oh, my God, your dad would just go through the roof with joy. And that made me cry, buddy. And it's almost got me right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, considering where your dad came from, I mean, he was obviously a great man, you know, that that's uh, and there you are, you know, repaying the service, you know? Yeah, man. That's that's the way it's done. Remember, make sure you subscribe to our channel, join our Patreon, get early access to our videos. You can make a donation to the channel. There's a link in the very top of the description. Buy a t-shirt, spread the word. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music.